how what has been the reception that you've heard f- with people from this book? It was kind of funny because I had a guy who was a um, big way with a huge company. Uh, and he said, you know, firing people at our company is like flicking flies off of an airplane. He says, you know, <laughs> we've fired thousands of people a year. And he said, I like, give me the metrics. What's going on with this? And he asked me about 26 questions because his first reaction was I did not like the book because he thought it was, you know, results is the only thing that matters kind of guy. And uh, I answered his questions, gave the stuff back to him. He came back and he is now a volunteer for us. It works <laughs> and uh, is helping us get the message out. He's become a, a like a true believer on this because he sees now that if you build the culture, the results will come. Did he get fired from his job for not performing? <laughs> no, no. He, uh, he retired quite wealthy, actually. He's uh, he did very well okay. in his job and he's doing, uh, um, yeah, he's done well with that. But my, uh, but what he began to notice in all of this was it was helping his marriage. It was helping him with his parenting. It was helping him with these other things. And, it, and he was seeing the connection that this is not either or, that you either are nice to people or you get results. Like this is talking about how, how, do, I, how do I not lose my humanity in all of this, right? How do I stay the relational engaged person that I want to be? And how do I create a culture of relational engaged people who are going after a mission, right? Who are going after this thing. And that's kind of the secret sauce, right? So you look at the best coaches and there are coaches who win for a couple of years, but then they lose their voice in the locker room. And then there are people who create dynasties Mm -hmm. and they, they create cultures and uh, those cultures turn out success and people love to tell their stories about being part of that culture and what it meant. So that's what we're talking about with the leader is that that priority one of leadership is the culture. Priority one is creating a an identity that is anchored in joy. Like it's the difference, uh, you know, one, again, one of the analogies that Jim used when we were uh, first processing the book was, let's say that you start off saying, I want to build a hamburger joint that sells the, we want to give people the best casual dining experience on the West side of Indianapolis, right? That's going to be our goal. Well, and then you don't make quite enough money the first month. So you cut corners and uh, you go from, you know, cloth napkins to paper napkins and you cut some more corners. You cut, and before you know it, you're no longer anywhere near this identity of creating the best dining experience on the West side of Indy. So you've got to find a way of creating an identity that makes you want to go to work every day. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is why we're doing it. This is us, man. It's like, I can't wait to go do this. I love the people I'm doing it with. I love the people we're going to. And and the, the more hardships that we face and overcome as a team, the more bonded our team will become. Mm. So we don't bond by avoiding hard things. We bond by overcoming hard things together. Mm. And so that's really the hallmark of great leaders, right? Is that they are the ones who build teams that get stronger right? The more battles that they have to face uh, versus immature leadership tends to create teams that fall apart in the face of hardship. Mm. Have you had any other leadership people that teach leadership come to you after reading the book and say, what, what are you guys talking about here? This seems so different than anything that I've ever encountered. Um, just a few. We have had a few. I mean, we'd I, one of my favorite reviews uh, on this was a guy with a PhD in leadership who said, you know, it's practically my job to read books on leadership. And they, after a while, they all sound kind of the same. He says, this is the first one I've read that's truly different. Mm. And he said, in a long, long time. Mm. And, uh, and he said, there's actually new paradigm, new thinking in this. And he said, uh, in fact, the people who published the book said most of our books have one novel idea that drive the book. You guys have a novel idea per chapter. And, uh, and that's awesome. I, I attribute that to the genius of my co-author, Jim. You know, my job is to make it understandable and simple and accessible. So that's the kind of feedback that we've gotten. Um, we've gone into both churches and corporate places that have had a tradition of toxicity and for a lot of people, they, they've just never even heard any of these paradigms before. And so what happens is you may know it's toxic, but the question is, who do you blame for the toxicity? And what is, mm-hmm. the, what is to blame for the toxicity? And uh, what you'll find is that everybody's so busy pointing the finger at other people that no one is actually looking at personal maturity and what the skills of personal maturity are and 
what the culture should be and how you grow that culture versus the one that we have grown. And so they aren't all success stories, right? But most of them have definitely had an aha moment where they, I may have been thinking about this wrong. And that's kind of what, uh, what we're after.